Historically, August is a month of stock market volatility, and this August has been no exception. The market has decided that Greece is no longer a problem for the short term. The third rescue package has been passed, and despite the fact that the IMF is suggesting that further debt relief is necessary, and there is some concerns about Greece's ability to implement its uh, reform packages, uh, the problem for the time being is not deemed that important. Attention has turned to China, where we've seen the People's Bank of China loosen the peg to the US dollar. The renminbi has been pegged to the US dollar over the last few years quite tightly, and with the strength of the US dollar, this has meant that uh, the currency has got quite expensive, especially against local competitors. With the Chinese economy slowing, there are some significant fears still around about the possibility of a hard landing. The decision was taken to loosen this peg and allow market rates to be a greater determinant of the level against the US dollar. Market participants are a little bit schizophrenic about this move. The Chinese for years have been accused of manipulating their currency and are told to let market forces determine its level. As soon as they initiate measures that will allow market forces a greater influence in the level, they're accused of embarking upon a currency war of competitive devaluations. The real reason I think the Chinese have made this move is that it is essential to have a free-floating currency to allow them to join the elite SDR club of the IMF, which is their medium-term intention. One of the implications of this change has been that the renminbi has devalued about 3% against the US dollar over the course of the last week. It would seem to me that in the short term, the Chinese market will remain somewhat turbulent, and we have an expectation of further currency weakness, maybe another 3 to 6% devaluation over the months that lie ahead. So whilst we feel that the longer-term outlook for China remains quite bullish, I think in the short term there's a little bit of uncertainty. And because of the concerns about the currency, we have exited at our asset allocation meeting from a, from a renminbi-denominated bond fund. The tone of the asset allocation meeting was perhaps one of the most cautious that we've had for some time. There's a clear sense that the global economic backdrop is deteriorating. In the US, on the one hand, we've got some decent GDP figures at 2.3%. We've got a reasonably happy consumer benefiting from weak oil prices, a little bit of a pickup in wages, a decent housing market. So we have a generally cheerful consumer that is keeping the domestic economy ticking over quite nicely. However, in terms of the stock market, valuations are getting a little bit expensive. The 12-month forward price earnings ratio is around 16 times. The rally we've seen lacks breadth. Only two out of 10 sectors are in positive territory. That's healthcare and retail. And if you look at the chart from a technical point of view, a chart of the S&P and indeed the uh, Dow Industrial, there is some signs that these markets could be rolling over. Most markets are at or around their 200-day moving average and are testing it at the moment. So it's an absolutely key level for the market. Situation is similar elsewhere. In Europe, despite the backdrop of a depreciating currency, QE and weak oil prices, growth has remained very, very muted. And they only came in with, I think, 0.3% in the second quarter after 04 in the first quarter. It's been a similar story in Japan, the last set of GDP figures were also quite weak. And the only bullish thing you can say about them is that that increases the, in the chances of further stimulative package in October. Mention needs to be made of the Fed. The latest set of Fed minutes have suggested that the FOMC is split as to whether or not to increase interest rates in September. Um, to a certain extent, the fact that the market is worried about a small interest rate rise surprises me, and I think in some ways it shows the fragility of the market. We know interest rates are going up in September or sometime soon after. I think there is a case to be made for just getting on with the job um, because the market is just going to fret about it until it actually rises. So from an economic point of view, they probably shouldn't go, but as they've indicated that they want to go, perhaps if only to have the ability to bring rates down again should the economy slow, the case is to be made for a September move. At this specific moment in time, the futures market is assigning about a 45% probability 
of a move upwards in September, which seems about right to me. The main outcomes of the asset allocation meeting were to increase our liquidity a little bit further. We have been running an overweight position in Asia, but given the sort of short-term concerns we have for that region and the sort of spillover uh, from emerging markets, etc., etc., we've raised 2.5% cash using our balance model as, a, as an example there. And for some models such as that, um, liquidity levels are now approaching 10%. As I said at the beginning, August is a difficult month. The markets have sold off quite heavily. There is a case to be made that the consensus view at the moment is one of nervousness. And as we know, consensus views are usually wrong. So when all fund managers uh, return from their holidays in early September, they have a lot of liquidity to invest in the markets. And Looking at individual stocks rather than um, in stock market indices, there are a lot of stocks that have fallen 10 20% throughout the summer, so there are some bargains around. Uh, whether or not uh, this is the moment to buy remains to be seen. I think it's a time when we have to be very careful in the markets. We've been quite cautious. We've raised liquidity over the last few meetings. This market is probably going to be all right and we're probably going to get a buying opportunity sometime soon, but there's just a, just a possibility that we could see some further significant short-term weakness first. So we're keeping extremely vigilant at the moment. We're looking at the market very, very closely and prepared to move quickly as circumstances dictate.